Hey guys, it's Ellen and welcome to my channel. Um, today we're working on another Christmas card idea. A little lantern in the snow. I go over this, uh, how I created this. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And if you haven't hit the bell notification button, please do so to know my tutorials up. Um, yes, I go over this to, uh, step by step and I show you two reference photos, how I combine them to create this kind of look. And you know, I talk about how you can create it for yourself to make it different and change it up as well. Also, if you're a Patreon member, you can download the traceable that I use for this. And if you're not a Patreon member, it's where I have traceables, ad-free videos, exclusive tutorials on Thursdays, uh, live stream in the top tier, and just a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. You can check it out right up here in a second. Boop! And uh, look at it. So without further ado, let's get started and please don't forget to ask if any any questions in the comment section here we go okay guys for this uh tutorial i'm going to go over my supplies i have a piece of arsh 100 percent cotton cold pressed paper it's like a five by seven uh i taped it down with scotch tape on just a thick piece of cardboard just to keep it you know from moving around um i have my palette here my paints i have this gold paint so we'll talk about in a minute um I, the, I got these from Prestige Fly. I have a uh, Prestige Fly. Fly. <laughs> I have a um, tutorial w way back on that, um, but I have a link for another one on the description box here because um, I have that. I've been using my Princeton Eight Long Velvet Touch Series Long Round. Um, I'll probably be using my Twelve to mop up, mop in the color of the Twelve uh, Neptune Series of Princeton. And a paper towel, water jars, and whatnot. And I attached a re uh, reference photos. So I'm going to kind of combine. So I kind of use this uh, lantern, although mine's a little stumpier. I kind of made mine a little simpler than this. It's not the same lantern. I got the I liked the, the, the greenery here with the snow falling, but I really like this. So we're going to play around with combining the two, right? And you could do that, like to find some like royalty free photo and combine the two and um, see how it comes out, you know, play around with. And then the greenery doesn't have to be exactly this greenery. You can add, like, I have a sketch for the Patreon members. I added some berries and some holly leaves. You know, lantern doesn't have to look like this shape, it could be square. It just gives you an idea. Like, I like the snow falling, I like the grays with the gold here. So, we're gonna just play around. So, I have my sketch, I mean, my sketched out. <clears throat> lantern. I used masking fluid to cover the lantern and some of the um, greenery pieces here because I'm just going to wash this gray across. So if you've been using watercolor for a while, you know, it's good to mask out some of these images, uh, these, these, the lantern and some of these things because you, you're you going to have gray and if you're going to put, I'm going to make my lantern red, but if you're going to make all these colors um, in the background, it's going to be all muddy when you paint the red over the gray. You don't want to do that. Um, you can make the lantern gold. You can make the lantern any color you want. Green. Well, it wouldn't be good if you were going to have greens with green. It wouldn't be smart. So you could do brown. You can keep it white. Um, I don't know. I might keep it white. I don't know. So I'm going to play around with the background color first. Uh, I've got my 12 here. And I have a bunch of colors. I'm gonna make this gray tone, and you can make yours similar or this, you know, or bluer or whatever you want to do. You can do blues. I have this color called neutral tint, and it's actually a color, a color called neutral tint. And you see, it's on the purple side. I always test these colors in the strip. See, it's a little more purple, and then that I might have to add some burnt umber to it to change that gray. You want to mix a really good amount. Always test it. Always test it. Right, a little more brown, I guess. And we'll see. Play around. Okay, so I'm going to clean up my brush, and I'm going to add water everywhere I want the paint to go. So here on the bottom line, I'm going to go across here because I can, because I put that masking fluid down and go right across. Now I already have some gray still on my brush, but it's so light, it's not a big deal. So I'm getting this all wet. 
moving this paper. Just now. And I'll start bleeding in my gray. Now they show some gold in here. I might try and bleed in some gold. And it's starting to be a little bit dark. So I'm going to grab some water on my brush that I used, tilt the paper, and kind of push that down. And that's going to stop where the water is. It's not going to go any further. If there's no water there, it's not going to go anywhere. So I'm going to kind of push that color right across. It was a little bit dark on the corner here. Now we can try and add that gold going across in the middle. And I have these metallic golds. And pick up reasonably good. Some of these are a little too brassy. And let's see how it's going to look. I like to experiment with you guys. So I've got the gold going right around here. Yeah. Let's get that right in there. Why not, right? I'm going to go back in and add some gray. And a little more gold. You can go make it a little bit darker. You can add some blues if you want, but I like the gray. The gray, the gold, the white. It's all going to look really pretty. So naturally, once this is done, it's a little dark in the sky, but I kind of like that. The darker up here, we can put some nice like snowflakes. I'm adding a little more of this neutral tint, a little bit darker. Kind of bleeding in some of that darker color down in here and up in here. I'm just kind of dotting it because I don't want that gold to look like one big line. Does that make any sense? I hope so. And this needs to bleed a little bit more smoother. I'm standing up so I can see. And I think we've achieved kind of what we're going for. Maybe a little bit darker up here. You can just kind of remove that. All right, so then this point, you have to let the paint dry on its own. Might get a little bit darker under here. Just a tad. Before we go back in and add color, you could go in, grab some of this gold. Try and make some circles already. See, I'm just tapping it in. Let's see how they bleed. Kind of fun. I'm going to do some actual, like you know, see, you see in the photograph, they're really concentrated, you know. Some are like very hazy and some are not. I think that maybe the gold line was a little too much. I don't know. I'm just playing around with it. Like I said, you can go in and add some of the gray. Just bleed some of that back in. I'm just going to tap it in there, see how it looks. It might be a little too dark, so I don't know, it's doing like the spider vein. I'm playing around with chopping in some more gray. So, so it doesn't look like this weird solid gold line. All right, I don't want to overwork it too much. Also guys, before um, you know you let it completely dry, you can play around with taking some white gouache. I'm just gonna take some white gouache in my number eight. And you can splatter it so it kind of looks like the top one combined with the bottom one. Because when you get the gouache in here, um, it does like this repelling kind of effect where it kind of looks, that has that hazy kind of look um, because that's chalk in it. So you can try and splatter some while it's still wet and see what happens. Just be gentle with it. If you want to tape off this side, you can tape off this side. 
I'm being careful not to spot it too much. See? Now it's going to spread out. It's going to give it that real kind of like snowy effect. And then we're going to come back and do our other thing. Okay, once that's dry, we can take our rubber cement pickup. Um, I have a link to this in my description box that I use to pick up the masking fluid really easy. Without using tape, right? you know, it just gathers it all. It's a little thing I used to use in college. So now I have to decide if I want to keep it white or not. If I keep it white, I have to do all kinds of shading to it and whatnot. I think a red might be a little harsh. I don't know. But why not, right? Let's just go for it. Because <laughs> I like to do things like that. So I'm going to take my Princeton number eight. Gonna mix up some red. I've got my I make to make I like to make my red, so I use magenta. Quinacodo magenta. Hear me clanking. I have like three jars by the way. Three water jars. And I grab my cabin yellow deep. I've got pretty red. A little more orangey. I'm gonna grab some more of this magenta. Now you might want to clean your brush, but since it's so pinky, it doesn't really matter. You're going to need a um, a darker red also. So I'll grab a magenta again. Just for the shading. And I'll put a teeny bit of the Prussian blue. Now see this purple. I'm going to have to grab more magenta again. And clean my brush and grab the yellow. Yeah. Um, and I also have little stars in the windows like they have here. So we want to keep that yellow. I think mine got erased when um, the masking tape thing came off. And the one up here, I'll have to re-sketch in my little lantern here um, just for guiding it. Like I said, I'm kind of making mine up as we go along. I don't need to necessarily follow their rules of their white one. So I'm just going to grab some of this cabin yellow deep, touch a little burnt ember, this golden yellow color, and I'll put that in the windows, I mean the windows of the little peaky stars. Now I'm using an eight. It might be hard for you to use a bigger brush for this tiny little thing, but I'm used to it. And there's a golden yellow hue back here from the um, the candle illuminating the lantern. So I'll put it back here on this two lines back here. And then the rest of us are doing the red. But actually the golden yellow hue is because the uh, lantern is white. I'm just going to fill this in. Oops. Now I'm doing this pretty loosely. You can get really tight if you want to. Um, some people like to paint that way. I can paint that way. I have tutorials on some realistic stuff. There's plenty of uh, YouTubers that love to paint realistic. Um, Louise DeMassey, she's really great for that. Okay, so I'm using Cadmium Yellow Deep and Peacock Blue to get this nice green. I know I'm skipping from red to doing my greenery. I just decided all of a sudden that I should be doing that first because it's going to cover over on top of my, my red. But I'm going to fix... this red first. Just going to kind of fill this in. But you started. I didn't paint this section here. I'm going to go back into that in a second. Okay, so I just kind of fill that in. I'm going to make the greens with the 
the peacock blue and the yellow. Just make a nice bright green to start off with. And then you can add some Prussian blue to that. Make it a deeper green and some burnt umber. More blue. Then you get a darker green and a lighter green. You're going to need the combinations for um, making a little greenery. So I'm just going to put the color in here. Now if I did this over the gray, it might come out a little muddy. That's why I use the masking fluid. I'm just going to paint. It doesn't matter, you know, you could paint like underneath the white area. So that it's almost like snow on top of it. And then you have that darker green. So just gonna put this loosely in here. Get even darker. Put some greenery coming up over here. See, I'm bleeding in some of the deeper green. This red isn't quite dry, so I'll be careful putting it on that. And then out here. Washing in some of this greenery. Now, like I said, you could add like a branch with some berries, holly, um, flowers, pine cone. Put a pine cone in there. I'm gonna go back to my red in a second. I'm just gonna try and fill in some of the greens. Okay, so I got that. So I got where the greens are going to go. And I'm going to put some of my reds back in here. On the lantern, I kind of lost again with the masking fluid stealing my pencil lines. I'm just going to fill in where the rest of the lantern is. In here so you know you don't need me to do I might just go ahead and fill in this whole thing because the red one the star up top is going to be darker just fill all this in with the red so it's a little tedious it's a little not an easier to do it you know this is a medium intermediate tutorial for people can't always be in the beginner stage, a lot of people progress. Okay, so you're filling that in. This is still wet over here I have to get my last little lantern piece. I'm gonna be very careful. <laughs> I don't want it to bleed too much. Just want it peeking through, and there we go. We add that red. No, I think the inside piece can stay yellow, even though the other the photograph shows it white. Now you can grab some of this deeper red, and you can put that deeper red under here. On the side here, it's going to be shadow. The light is coming this way, like you see in the photograph. So the reds can get a little bit deeper and darker on this side. And then use some of that deep red as a guide. Okay. So we're going to go back in here when this dries and put in our gray candle. We're going to do some snow and then we're going to start doing those gold uh, flecks and white flecks. 
Okay, guys, I went back in and the yellow stripes in here that were part of the lantern, I decided to paint red because it didn't make sense and I stood up and looked at it. So here we show, zoom in a little bit. I put some darker red on the side here again. I'm gonna go back in again with this deeper red and just fill that in. I do a little line going across here. You can carry the lantern handle here. Just going in and adding some deeper tones. And then under here, on the side in between the greenery, just getting a little bit darker. I'm using this deeper red for kind of outlining the actual lantern and around the little stars. You don't want to leave the white there. So I'm going to clean up my brush, grab a little water, and kind of push that dark red. See, clean up my brush. I'm just going to push it out to the rest of the lantern. And then grab my red. Fill that in. Still want to fill this red in here and here. It's getting too light. I want a nice bright red. And we'll go back in and we'll add some details to that again. Because as it, you know, watercolor dries, it gets pretty light. So down here, we can go back in and add some greens. Okay, I had that blue, green, dark green. Just kind of wisp in, just like that line wisp in. I show a tutorial on how to make greens like this. Gonna get a little bit darker. I'm gonna add some Prussian blue. So they just don't look like this goofy green sitting around. We're gonna add some, you know, snow to it too. So don't fret if it messes up a little bit. And then go back into this one. Fix some of these greens too. Wisp, 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 wisp. See, line down. Wisp, 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 wisp. Don't have to follow the picture. Mine completely does not look like the picture. I mean, maybe the lantern and position, but so now for the snow, you can use the grays again for shadowing that we have up here that we used here. Kind of water them down. Just kind of like go like this and take the edge of my, my number eight brush and kind of just doing this Water down, snow. You can add a little blue. I have some ultramarine blue. But generally, you know, I, and I wouldn't introduce too many colors. And back here, it's going to be darker because of the shading. The light is coming this way. So we're going to add this grays here. Still want to keep it light for the snow. Get a little bit darker underneath the greenery. Now it's making a hard edge, so I'm going to clean up my brush. And I'm just going to push this paint around on the edge and lift it up. This one doesn't matter if it's a little bit of hard edge. Going back with my gray and grabbing some more gray and mixing it up. Sorry guys. Getting a little bit deeper in the color. Because it's in the shadow. Okay, so now we're gonna play around with um, 
we're going to fix this little lantern inside. They have like a little bright white gold yellow lantern. A little bit of gray. I'm going to put the gray in here. So it's like a votive candle that's in here. And then we have that bright whitish yellow. And you can use the gold. So we have the gold paint, we have gouache. And we're gonna take the gold. I've got all these different golds here. Using my Princeton 8, I start making some circles. Now they can be really intense circles and then some iridescent ones. So put some like this. Just like you see in the picture. Going across. Round circles over here. For kind of gold colors. There's a bunch of different colored golds. And some were fainted. So I'm just doing the circles for now. It's good that this palette has a lot of different golds. And then some of that dry and get lighter more water, iridescent circles. And then some that were pretty intense. Right? We're gonna have to let that section dry. I'm gonna go back over with some white and then we could use some of the gold the highlight the candle can highlight the inside of the lantern so i'm going to let all these golds dry Meanwhile, I'm going to go back with my brush and kind of fix the lantern, adding the deeper red for the handle and some details. So I'm kind of pushing this paint around a little bit darker. Because it wouldn't be in light on the edge next to the greens. And you can even get darker still. Adding in the edge. Now there was a um, star here. You can make a deep dark star. I'm just using this deeper red to go over these areas that should be shadowed, which is like the side here, under the edge here, over here, a little bit under here next to the greenery, and next to this greenery here, and on the top, and a little bit on the bottom. All right, so this is where the gouache comes into play again. You can remove with a, you know, a really intense, like a, All right, so now we're going to use the gouache to make that iridescent bokeh kind of look. Um, you could have used a, a stencil brush and try and move the paint, but I like it this way. So I've watered down my gouache, tap paper towel, and then do the circles. Make sure it's really iridescent. And play around with that consistency of the color going over 
the gold to bigger ones here ones that are actually really white see and some like intense white ones go right over the gold I would make them various in sizes too and then out here a little more translucent they're gonna dry lighter anyway so just let you know that and up here getting there I mean it takes time to do this kind of stuff now see it's already drying translucent so you have to go back over and get some ones that are not going to be translucent we're getting our effect right little circles up here little dots it's getting there guys now mine's looking a little too uniform so I'm going to add some ones that are kind of not uniform also so now at this point you can take some of the gouache and you can kind of cover on top of your greenery if you want to have snow on it so you're just kind of placing it just how we did on top bulk it here like the snow has now accumulated on top of the greenery and then here see it was good to put the gray in and then you could add the white snow kind of going back in here covering the lantern and the same thing with out here and I would put some snow on top of the lantern because you know would make no sense why all these things are covered and the lantern is not just go on top of those leaves you can put a little snow on top of the lantern maybe a little snow on the handle right kind of cute And this is how I would do it. Now, like I said, you can add some berries in here. I didn't add any berries, um, but you certainly can do that. And I keep standing up so I'm kind of making sure that I have my little circles. If the, if the drying light, you can go back in and add the bright thickness of the gouache. See, mine were drying pretty light. Let's go back and add it. More snow here. You can splatter some of it too. So it looks like natural snow is snowing also. Because really, it's kind of the effect, right? You have some big snow and little snow. And there you go. Now I did like the gold idea. I don't know if I was successful at it. You can tell me. <laughs> like I said, you could add some berries. Add more gold. Do whatever makes you feel good. I mean, it doesn't have to be my way or the highway. I might go back in and actually add some gray in here. I feel like that gold just got so crazy, right? Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it kind of changes it a little bit. Not so intense, right? Because I'm moving to make it skinnier. But hey, 
You're experimenting. That's the whole point, having fun. And like I said, you could have had, um, made a mess of my paints right now. Don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> Can add some berries in here. Now I would have done that ahead of time with the masking fluid. Can always add a white. Just a couple of berries. Doesn't have to be a lot. I'll put one in here. Okay guys, so through the magic of television, I dried my berries. I'm gonna add the little white halo I talked about. Just a little white line here. And the way you can add also the snow on top of the berry. See, a little gouache on top of the snow, the little berry. Cause you know, it would make no sense and everything else has snow on it and not the berries. And there you go. And I'm just gonna wrap this up. We take this off. My lovely tape. If it decides to come off. Uh, so this might be a long rambling tutorial, but uh, I'm a real time girl. Real time girl. You know. Some people like to see that. The edited version makes you seem like, and oh, they make it so perfect. And that's the real time picture of the little lantern in the snow. So thank you guys for stopping by my channel, being patient. Get a little creative with it. Um, you get the two, two um, reference photos. You don't have to do the gold like I tried to. I mean, I would have like, if I was going to do it again, I would have done it like up and down, up and down like they did it. Mine's a little wider. I would have done less. You know, it should have been like none here. You know, stuff like that. But hey, these are just minor things. And then you go in with your little number four brush and you go in and you do all the little details that you feel like you'd want to do. Which is adding in some deeper red here on the sides just so it looks a little more realistic. I mean, it's not super realistic. It doesn't have to be hyper realistic, but you get the idea. And then down here, you can write Merry Christmas, whatever you feel like. So thank you guys for being awesome subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you haven't hit the bell notification, no bell notification button, please do so. So that you know when my tutorial is up and yeah, check out Patreon um, where they, I gave you the traceable for this. Um, I added holly and berries in that one, but, um, you know, change it up. So take care guys. Have a great weekend. I'll speak to you soon.